I'm gonna to try to do a compression test on my motorhome. While this isn't a how-to video, it's more of a, if I can do it, so can you, not a big deal. Hello everyone and welcome back to our next video. Uh, so I have a little story to tell. Yesterday I was on my way up from Phoenix to Flagstaff, uh, actually Sedona, and going up a long grade on 17, my motorhome started acting up. It was cutting out, it was overheating, I had to pull over three or four times, super, super stressful day. Do not recommend that for anyone, but that is something that was very concerning to me. Uh, and it continued, well, even once I got over the grade, it continued to kind of act up on me. Uh, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try to do a compression test on my motorhome uh, on these cylinders. Uh, now, this is not necessarily a how-to video. It's more of a, if I can do it, you can probably do it too. It's, it's not super complicated. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get into the engine components to get to the spark plugs. That's essentially what I'm doing is I, I'll take out the spark plugs, put a compression test on there, uh, and then crank it over and that will give me a compression on my cylinders. The cylinders for this, the V8, is supposed to be around 150 PSI. So we'll see what that ends up being. But again, I just wanted to emphasize the fact that while this isn't a how-to video, it's more of a, if I can do it, so can you, not a big deal. Uh, a couple of the tools I'll be using today though, uh, I do have a compression tester kit uh, that I bought years ago when I used to have a motorcycle. Uh, I had done some work on that previously. Uh, so I already have the compression test. They're not super expensive, I'm guessing 40 bucks or so. Uh, you'll also need a spark plug wrench, I'm sorry, spark plug socket, uh, and then uh, you'll wanna have a ratchet. <clears throat> a uh, ratchet as well with an extension probably I'll be needing. Uh, otherwise, that's a pretty simple tools. Uh, the essence is that you basically take this compression, there's a hose right here, uh, and you take out the spark plugs, all of them, uh, and then you screw this in uh, so it acts like a spark plug basically, it has the same threads. And then you turn over the engine and it just checks out the compression as the piston is going up and down, it, it builds up pressure. Uh, and so this will record that. Uh, and so the first thing I need to do is clean out my bay on the inside because I have tons of stuff surrounding the doghouse where the engine cover is. So I need to take that out, all the stuff around it, then I need to warm up the engine uh, to operating temperature, turn it off, pull all the spark plugs, and then I should be good to go. So uh, yeah, so come on along, we'll check it out and we'll see if I can do this. Now I did want to mention one thing and it's a quick disclaimer that I am not a mechanic nor am I an expert in any of these things. These are just things that I've learned over the years to help me uh, get by more cheaply, quite honestly. Uh, so I've learned some tricks and some mechanical things in the past that have helped me with this. Uh, but please, if you don't feel comfortable doing something like this, don't do it. Go to a mechanic, get a professional help. Um, but if you do have some of these skills and you could look up YouTube videos, things like that, and figure out how to do some of the things, it might be very beneficial to learn some of these, especially with an older vehicle because they are much simpler to work on. So just wanted to say that quick disclaimer. Okay, we'll go ahead and get it up to operating temperature. It'll take probably about five minutes or so. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna also start bringing my tools into the motorhome as well as removing the cover and so forth. So uh, I'll be back when I get done with that. Okay, so I took the cover off. Uh, we have the engine right there. Uh, everyone's engines will look a little different. Uh, mine is old school carbureted, so it's gonna look a lot different than a modern engine. Uh, modern engines are probably gonna be a little harder to get into the spark plugs, but I don't know that for sure because I only have old vehicles. <laughs> so uh, I know what I'm getting into. I've done this before. Uh, so we'll just, uh, again, the, the hardest part for this is just getting all some of the accessories off so that I can get to the spark plugs a little easier. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that I always label my spark plug wires so that I know which ones go back to which spark plug because that is hugely important for a good running engine. It won't run if you don't have the correct spark plugs on the correct 
uh, uh, the wires on the correct spark plug. So make sure you label them, you know, which one, which cylinder they're going to. So I'm going to go ahead and finish warming up the engine now. And uh, then I'll go ahead and just get started on taking off the spark plugs out. The tough thing about this one is that the spark plugs are located in such a way that it's hard to get your hands in there. Uh, so it's one of the reasons I kind of dread doing this, but again, very doable. If I can do it, so can you. Let's get to work. Hey guys, all right, so I got all the spark plugs out. The spark plugs look okay. Uh, nothing nothing horrible to look at that. I'll probably regap them since I have them out anyway. Also check all the spark plug wires, make sure that uh, none of them are arcing out or any um, like cuts on the, uh, the wires and so forth. Uh, but now I need to go ahead and uh, screw this adapter right here into each of the cylinders uh, that no longer have spark plugs in them. And then you attach it to this and then we crank it over. We have to make sure that uh, one of the things I don't think I mentioned before is you have to make sure the fuel pump is off. Uh, and so on different vehicles, uh, there might be a, a, a there might be a fuse or something you pull or something you disconnect uh, to get the fuel pump to stop pumping. Uh, for mine, I actually have a switch, just a toggle switch so that I can turn off my fuel pump and then still crank it over. Cause you don't want gas rushing into the cylinders while you're doing this test. Cause that's uh, just bad in general. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and put this in and see how it goes. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's going to do the fuel pump is off. All right. All right, so that's 120, which isn't great. Uh, it should be around 150, but it's still holding some pressure. So that's good. So guys, I just did a compression test and uh, actually the cylinders are actually mostly okay. That's uh, 140 to 145 uh, for most of the cylinders. There were two cylinders that were at 120. So I'm gonna squirt a little oil in those two cylinders, see if it brings up uh, the compression uh, because if it's the rings around the pistons, a little bit of oil will temporarily seal those. And so you'll know whether it's the bottom half or the top half of the engine. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, see what uh, numbers I get from that and we'll go from there. Okay guys, uh, so I went ahead and put the oil in two of the cylinders that were a little bit of concern to me uh, and it did increase the uh, PSI uh, but I also did it on one that was still uh, one of the cylinders that was still good and it also increased the PSI not significantly uh, but it went up about 10 or 15 pounds. Um, so I'm going to reiterate the fact that I am not a mechanic so this is my little disclaimer I mentioned earlier I'm not a mechanic. If you don't feel comfortable doing these kind of things, take it to mechanic. You know, I, this is how I survive on the road is that I need to fix my own things because it saves me a lot of money. Uh, so one of the things that helps out is I invested in a Haynes manual. They also have Chilton manuals. Uh, and this one is for my van or for a spread of years for my van. Uh, and with this, you can get a lot of good information, a lot of, uh, uh, specifications, a lot of instruction on how to do some of the more simple things. Uh, but in the end, the conclusion with what I've done here is that uh, in the past, when I did a compression test, uh, some of the cylinders were at 70 pounds and they're supposed to be at 150. That meant those cylinders were dead pretty much. Uh, it was the uh, valves on top. Uh, but considering all these are 120 and above, uh, not a huge concern. Uh, and so uh, we are just going to chalk it up to hopefully it was just overheating on the way up. I did have an issue with the fuel line that, uh, again, referring to that drive up the 17 from uh, Phoenix to Flagstaff, that uh, there was a fuel line that was cracked and sucking air in. And so I think that was part of the hesitation uh, that also would cause your engine to run lean and that tends to overheat things as well. Again, not a mechanic. These are just things I've learned over the years. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together, uh, regap the spark plugs, and uh, I should have a good running engine after that. So see how it goes. All right, guys, we finished the compression test. I actually cleaned the carburetor while I was at it because I already have all the stuff off. Uh, but put it all back together and I put all the wires on the correct spot. I double checked all my work. So now we're going to turn the key and hope that it actually still starts because. Whenever I work in an engine, 
there's always that chance that it, it will be worse than when I started. So I always know that going in, but we're gonna give it a try. Let's see what happens, guys. Just like that, purr, so success. Well, thanks guys for watching the video today. I hope this was informative and helpful in some way. Uh, again, this is not a how-to video. Uh, this is more of a, if Brian can do it, you can do it too, because I am not the best at these things. Uh, and so really, if you have any kind of mechanical ability, you can probably do some of these things. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, so tell me, who here has done a compression test? Or tell me about your experiences working on your own vehicle. Were you able to, or did you eventually have to take it into a mechanic? I would love to know. Let us know in the comments below. Uh, but in the meantime, please subscribe to the channel, show us some love, give us a big thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you guys all down the road. Take care, guys. If you are brand new to the road or would just like to see everything in one place, Bob is offering classes on Skillshare and Udemy.com. It's a comprehensive nomad course that has five and a half hours of content spread out in 19 classes with everything you need for your life on the road to make it the best possible experience it can be. Bob covers all the details from solar and internet options to where to park and how to stay clean, working on the road, traveling on a budget, and so much more. So we hope you'll check it out, the ultimate crash course to living on the road, how you can afford a life of travel and adventure.